So I gotta be honest, today I find myself making a video that I never really thought I was gonna make. I just figured there's already a gazillion T-nut videos on the internet and really the last thing anybody needs is another one. However, as I was standing in the shop this week trying to figure out what I was gonna do for a video, two things occurred to me. One is that I still really need to make T-nuts for this machine. And two is that I literally had nothing else prepared for this week. So, you know, it was kind of a no-brainer. So, yes, you heard the intro correctly. We're going to be making T-nuts. However, before you click away, just give me a minute and hear me out. Also, quick sidebar before we go any further, check out this sweet made in the USA Craftsman socket wrench that I found at the flea market. Listen to this. That thing is just smooth as butter. If you're telling me that this doesn't get your motor running, I don't know. I don't know what to say. So anyway, like I was saying, even though we're just making T-nuts, in order to keep things interesting, for this project, I've decided to use the horizontal arbor and horizontal milling cutters for the very first time. So even if you aren't particularly interested in the T-nuts, if you are interested in seeing somebody make a complete fold themselves and most likely do absolutely everything wrong, well, stick around because I've never done this before. Since I have never used a horizontal arbor before, I figured the first thing I should do was to get the arbor, the cutting tool, and the arbor support set up. This is going to allow me to get a better look at things like my clearances, vice placement, etc. So that I can start thinking about my setups and general machining strategy. Is my vice going to run into the arbor support or the headstock? That sort of thing. Well, I guess this is the general setup. I think it looks about right anyway. I'm gonna be using this one inch wide cutter. This is the widest cutter that I have for the horizontal arbor. And really, I wish that I had a wider cutter, at least for squaring up the stock. I have a really big shell mill on a 40 taper holder that will go right in this spindle. And I had originally thought that I would use that to square up the stock, but I quickly realized that using this vise to hold the work, there was no way that I was gonna be able to reach the work with a tool inserted directly in this spindle. A vise like this really seems to be designed for vertical milling, and it works really great for that. But with all of these different options I have for machining on this mill, I can go directly in this spindle, I can use the horizontal arbor, I can attach the vertical head. I think that there is a better solution out there for work holding. I'm thinking maybe something like a really nice horizontal vertical rotary table. I don't know, maybe I'll try and come up with something better in the future. Before we get started, I need to take some measurements of the T-slots so I know what size T-nuts we actually need to make. All that I know is that the ones I have are way too small. Just using some expanding parallels for this, these are great for this sort of thing because you can get into tight spaces and get accurate measurements. And that's enough stalling. I'm now ready to start squaring up the stock. To begin, I'll just be using one parallel and a mild steel bar against the movable jaw to take up any irregularities in the stock until I get a few reliably machined surfaces. I'm just cleaning up here, so these initial cuts are pretty shallow at 25 thousandths depth of cut and I am spinning the cutter at 75 RPMs with a four and a half inch per minute table feed. This seems to be working okay, 
but I think that I have a lot to learn about speeds and feeds when it comes to using the horizontal mill. And here it is, my first ever horizontal milled surface. I think that it looks okay, you know? I'm sure that it could be better, but I'm pretty happy with that. With the first surface machined, I'm now ready to switch to a slightly shorter parallel, and I will put that machined surface against the stationary jaw. I'm still using the round bar against the moving jaw, since that surface has yet to be machined. Now it's just repeat the process, cleaning up the next face, the same as the first. And now that I have two perpendicular machined surfaces, I can add my second parallel, putting the first machine surface down against the parallels, the second against the stationary jaw, and still using the little metal bar in the back. I can ditch the little metal rod now that I have three parallel and perpendicular machined surfaces, give everything a good cleanup, and then clamp those surfaces into the vise and tap everything in nice and square. At this point, I'm ready to take a measurement and I can start working towards my first major dimension which also means that I'm now ready to start taking some more serious cuts. This is a 100,000th step the cut. I am using the same spindle speed of 75 RPM. Table feed is still four and a half inches per minute. And quite honestly, it does not seem like the machine could care any less about this cut. It's just powering right through it. This thing can really move some metal. I definitely could have pushed this further but considering this is my first time horizontal milling, I just continued with this cut depth and feed rate because it seemed to be working really well and finished out this first dimension. Here it is so far, not looking too bad, I don't think. I am getting these ridges in the surface finish, and I'm assuming that this must have something to do with the rotation of the cutter and maybe the concentricity of the arbor. But, you know, I'm not really certain, so if there's anybody out there who has experience with horizontal milling and can tell me anything about this, please leave a comment below. And I'm not really sure how well it's coming up on camera, but I'm also getting this galling, especially on the last surface that I did. I'm assuming that this must be chips getting caught in the teeth of the cutter and then being drug across the surface. But again, you know, I'm not really sure. So if there is anybody out there with experience who can tell me anything about any of this stuff and or how I can improve it, uh, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. I just want to get better. This first dimension came out pretty much bang on though across the entire length of the part. So I am pretty happy about that. This dimension that you're looking at right here is the width, which means I just need to bring in the height and then cut in the T-shape. I'm putting in some taller, beefier parallels. I want to leave enough stock sticking up above the vise so that I can take it down to size and then also cut in my T-shape all without having to change the setup at all. Using some paper as an edge finder here, I guess this is pretty much how you do it with a horizontal cutter. Also, going to increase my cut depth just a little bit to a full eighth of an inch, and I will keep this depth pretty much throughout this entire process.
Just checking my height and then I am ready to cut in the T-shape. Well, it's starting to look like a big T-nut. I'm not sure what happened with the finish on this inside surface here. That cutter is supposed to be side cutting on both sides, but yeah, that certainly doesn't look nice. But you know, it's gonna be good enough for T-nuts. So next we need to drill and tap some holes. I now have to break down the horizontal setup and then reinstall the vertical head in order to do the drilling. Once again, I just can't reach the work with the drill if I have it held in this vise. This project has got me thinking a lot about fixturing on this milling machine, and I think there will be some projects coming up where I'll be working on some different things to try and remedy that situation and allow me to access work more readily and much more easily using this horizontal spindle. It's not that the vertical head is really difficult to install or anything, but I have a lot more tooling for the horizontal spindle and it's a lot easier and cheaper to find tooling for it as well. I'm going to start off spotting my hole locations. I'm keeping track of these locations using subdatums on the DRO, and then I'm going to move directly to a 7 16 drill, which is the tap hole size for a 1 half 13 thread. And now it's over to the drill press to chamfer and tap the holes. I just used the drill press to get the tap started and then I finished it by hand. I'm not going to make you watch me do this seven times. Looking pretty good I think. I guess all that's left to do now is... So there was supposed to be a really clever jump cut here that showed all of these being sawed off in sequence but uh, my camera didn't record any sound so you get an inferior version with me narrating instead. And just like that, shazam, T-nuts, as far as the eye can see.
well, 16 nuts, but they're a really good fit. They slide in nice and easy, but there's really no slop. They don't wobble or spin or anything like that. So I'm gonna feel a lot more comfortable using these on this table. You can see how much smaller the other ones were. And if I put it in the T-slot, you can see that it's just barely big enough to just grab the very edge of the T-slot. And I always felt like I was gonna damage or bend the T-slot somehow using these. And as an added bonus, all of the hardware is interchangeable between both the smaller and the bigger T-nuts. So that's nice. And when I tapped these, I didn't tap them all the way through down to the bottom. So I can screw in the bolts and they'll bottom out without poking through, which means I can tighten the bolt down and still slide it around in the T-slot. And I guess that wraps it up for this one. As usual, if you have made it this far into the video, thank you so very much. I do truly appreciate each and every one of you. Of course, an extra special thank you to my patrons. You find value in what I do, and for that, I am eternally grateful and inspired, so thank you. If you would also like to support my work, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description down below. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for that as well. If you haven't subscribed, but you like what I do here and you feel like I've earned it, give me a like and a subscribe. If you feel like I haven't, let me know what I can do better in the comments down below. And as always, until next time, get out there, make something awesome, even if it's just tea nuts. Most importantly, have some fun, and I hope to see you all again very, very soon.